you're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of GHS TV's award winning talk show, Crosstalk. I'm your host, Caitlin Poindexter. Each week in this time slot, we take a look at different issues, personalities, and events that affect you and our community. Spring Theater is kicking up speed, and actors all across Memphis are sharpening their skills for the upcoming season. The Poplar Pike Playhouse and the Panther Playhouse are both nationally recognized high school theater arts programs that have been the origin for many stage stars over the years. Ashley Williams of Germantown High School and Kiri Walls from Bartlett High School join me now to talk about both these incredible departments and their experiences as theater directors. Ms. Walls and Ms. Williams, thank you for coming on our show today. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. us. Can you tell us about the moment when you decided to become a fine arts educator? Ms. Walls, let's start with you. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, I, Miss Williams was one of my teachers uh, when I was a student at Germantown High School. Um, and I knew in the back of my head when I was in college and, and trying to figure out what I wanted to do um, that I always wanted to eventually teach theater uh, because there were so many teachers at Germantown High School on our fine arts staff that had such an impact on me um, and who I became as an artist. And that was always something that I thought would be really cool to give back. Um, and so it was always kind of in the back of my head. And then actually, as I was getting ready to graduate from University of Memphis with a BFA in theater performance, our, um, the department director at the time, Frank Bluestein, called me and said they were gonna have an opening. And I thought, well, here's an opportunity. I would be silly not to pass it up. And I jumped in with both feet and the rest is history. So I'm in um, year, 12, is that right? Yes. I think you're 12 mm -hmm. of, of theater education. So that's how I got started. And my story is almost exactly the same, but 10 years before <laughs> her started. Um, I was finishing my master's degree at the University of Arkansas um, in acting, and Frank Bluestein called me and he said, hey, I know you're getting ready to graduate, and we have an opening, and we would love for you to come. And I thought, you know what? This is great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a try, and this is my 19th year. So um, obviously it's stuck. <laughs> Ms. Williams, what is your main priority when teaching acting? I think, it's, I think it's the process of it. I think it's when you have a group of kids who don't think they're capable of doing something. They, it's, it's foreign to them. They're not used to connecting to their emotions and how to take this character and um, make it appear real. And I think when those connections happen, um, that's, really exciting as a teacher um, to see that in the classroom and on the stage. What do you think is the best way to help students understand that? A lot of exploration. You know, I think that so much as directors, we're worried about the product and the end result, which you have to be to an extent, but I think there has to be a freedom that you give um, kids to be able to discover these things for themselves. And um, I think when we're so product oriented that that can sometimes get in the way. And I think we have to remember that there's a process to what we're doing. Well, not only are you both theater teachers, but you're both the directors for your high school musicals. Ms. Wall, how does this impact you as a teacher? Um, I have to do a lot of time management uh, to make sure I'm getting everything done that I need to in the classroom, but also after school and in our extracurricular side of things, making sure that you know all the costumes are being made and the sets being built and uh, that the rehearsals are going on as they should be. So it's a lot of time management to, to juggle both things within the school day. Why do you believe theater is important for students, Ms. Walls? I think it's so important because especially in today's society, um, you know, we hear so much about, uh, you know, the youth of today having trouble interacting or connecting and we're all, I mean, I think even adults, we're so plugged into everything. We're always looking at our phones that I think so often 
we don't connect with each other, right? We've always got our headphones in and we're always looking at some kind of a screen. Um, so I think it's so important because theater is one of those things that it, it allows for these students to connect with one another on a level that they're not used to doing. Um, so I think that's so important in teaching um, the future about empathy and in having that connection with one another. How do you feel about it, Ms. Williams? Well, obviously I agree with what Ms. Walls said, but I also think it provides, at least during the school day and after school, it provides kids with a home away from home. And it is such a great way to plug in um, when you're coming to a large school like both of us um, where we teach. And so I think it, it you, we create this family and we're in it on the good days and the bad days, but it's a place where students know that they can come and they can be accepted for who they are and um, that it's just, it's a, it's a safe place for them to be and for us to create. Well, both of you are preparing for your upcoming spring musicals. Miss Walls, Bartlett High School is about to produce Hairspray. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yes, it's going to be a huge production. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, but we have been without a theater space for a year and a half at Bartlett High School. Um, our campus is undergoing a $64 million renovation, and as part of that, we're getting a whole new fine arts wing and auditorium. Um, that was built from scratch and we are still not in the new space but it is set to open sometime within the next three weeks we should be moving into the new theater. So it's very exciting for our community because um, this is we'll finally get to see and the community will be able to see um, this beautiful new space that's being built for us um, and so the students are really excited especially our seniors that they're able to get into the new space and have their senior show in the new auditorium and it's going to be really exciting. What are you most excited for about Hairspray? Um, I think I'm most excited, obviously, about the new space and to get to explore that. It's a much larger space. It's got a lot more um, capabilities than what we had before in our older space. Um, and I, I'm really excited. It's our biggest musical yet that we've had at Bartlett High. We've got the largest cast we've ever had, so we're really excited about it. Well, Ms. Williams, the Poplar Pike Playhouse is about to open Shrek the Musical fairly soon. What can, what can audiences expect to see? It is a spectacle, and I don't <laughs> think I even realized how much of a spectacle it was until I started working on it. But there are puppets, and there are huge dance numbers. But, you know, I think the biggest thing is the message of the show. Um, I saw it when it was in New York, and I just remember leaving and um, with songs like Let Your Freak Flag Fly and all of these different things that really are about accepting who we are, not on the outside, but on the inside, and that when it comes down to it, we're all the same. And I think that message is so, so important. And it's actually interesting because Hairspray is very mm -hmm. similar. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that those are messages that we see over and over again um, in theater. And I think it's because of how important that message is. What is the most challenging aspect about producing Shrek? I am blessed with wonderful students. So believe it or not, the acting and singing are at the bottom of my list of worries. I know that they are going to get out there and perform and it's going to be fabulous. But there are so many um, technical aspects. Our technical director, Katie Ward, who's a teacher here as well, um, has done just an incredible job of taking our little space that we have, that we love, but it is small, and being able to create this entire world of Shrek um, because it goes, you know, so many different places. And that is probably one of the most challenging. And then, of course, it's an extremely costume-heavy show as well. Well, I had a great time talking about high school theater. Thank you both for coming. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Coming up. We're taking it up a notch by looking into the college world of theater, where students get the opportunities they need to succeed. We'll be right back. Once upon a time, in a place where magic happens right before your eyes, there lived an ogre named Shrek, who set out on the greatest journey of his life. Stories seen at the Poplar Pike Playhouse have unexpected twists and turns. Where do you make friends along the way? And you might find love where you least expect it. Witness the big, bright, beautiful world of Shrek the Musical at the Poplar Pike Playhouse. February 20th until March 7th. Get your tickets online now at ppp.org or by calling 755-7775.
You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Crosstalk. Becoming a working actor is a rigorous process and takes hard work and talent to be successful. A prestigious college right here in Memphis is taking the time to push theater students' work ethic and imaginations, giving them the proper preparation for life after college. Here with me now from the University of Memphis is Alice Berry, the Director of Publicity for the Theater Department. Ms. Berry, thank you for coming today. Thank you for this opportunity. The theater department at U of M is well known throughout the region. Can you walk us through the typical four years of receiving a theater degree? Oh, wow. Okay, the typical four years. It depends on uh, what program you're in. At the University of Memphis, you can be a musical theater student, a performer, a design tech major that includes uh, lighting, sound, costumes, properties and stage management and then also dance. We have a dance uh, program as well and now a new dance science program. So of course it depends on what track you're in, on what your four years might look like. Uh, one of the great things I think about the program for all of those kids is that no matter what track they're in for classes, of course they're taking certain classes that uh, goes with their track, but the practical work, they can all experience that. For example, a musical theater student can play Hamlet, um, and a performer can be the lead in Anything Goes. Uh, so practically, they get to cross-pollinate and do a little bit of everything. You know, we can have stage managers who are also actors. Um, we have uh, several uh, students who actually do uh, dual degrees. They're either doing uh, design tech and musical theater. Uh, those kids have to work really hard. Um, it really is, too, about uh, what they put into their program. I always tell kids, if you put in 100%, you're going to get 110 back. Um, and so always jump in with both feet and, and work. It is a lot of work. Uh, the typical day, I don't know about the typical four years, but the typical day of a theater student uh, is they're going to classes in the morning. And then they work in the shops in the afternoons. Uh, they work in the scenery shop, publicity, uh, lighting and sound, costumes. And that way they're getting um, more skills that make them more valuable as performers or technicians. And then they're spending their evenings in rehearsal. And then at some point they're doing homework <laughs> because they also have classes because we are, uh, you know, an educational venue. So they do have gen eds and things like that. But it's a, it is a rigorous. It's a lot of work. And people do double major. We've had people double major in the department, like I said, and also sometimes with business or something like that. And those are extraordinary students that really have to, you know, take care of themselves and understand time management and work really hard. Um, I think I answered your question. And over, over their four years, hopefully what we're giving them is a well-rounded education in the classroom and uh, practically on the stage in our different venues. Um, and hopefully they're getting uh, different genres of theater that they're getting to experience in that four years that they kind of circle through all different genres of theater. That's our hope, is that they're getting that experience. Um, and on top of that, we encourage them to be entrepreneurs in this, this artistic world to take it upon themselves to create their own work. Uh, we do a student run production uh, and that is completely, they have a budget that they completely pick the shows, they pay the rights, they do produce it, they choose everything, they, it's all done by students. And so um, I think in their four years, my hope when I t talk to students, what I hope they're getting when they come to us is they're getting to explore their own artistic voice over that four years. Uh, the University of Memphis is not about making cookie cutter performers or designers. It's really about tapping into their artistic voice and letting them shine and grow in that way so that they can go out in the world and, and work in theater. Um, we also have, uh, at their senior year, we have a New York showcase where they go to New York for, uh, it's all about half a week, and they meet with different, um, it's not huge, it's not a Carnegie Mellon, you know, it's not huge, but they are meeting with um, an agents and um, working with commercial agents as well as, and um, television, and getting some experience doing that. And um, I think they found that very exciting. Another thing that we do now is this will be our third year of doing a New York alumni reunion, because we have about 47 alumni living in New York right now and so we bring the seniors there for their workshops and their um, 
showcase and then they get to meet all of our alums who are living there. And what's really nice is I've seen some of our alums have now hired recent grads to be in shows and things like that. So that's very exciting. I think it's a hard question to say, tell me four years, that's big. Uh, so I think I've covered a, a good bit. <laughs> oh, well, that was a great answer, so thank you. Okay, good. What do you value most about the college theater community? Um, I think it's kind of what the high school teachers are saying. It really has become, it becomes family. I just spent the weekend, you know, they're having UPTAs in town, which are the uh, professional auditions. And um, what's awesome is to see the alumni come back together in town and how they get, you know, just seeing they've made those connections. Those, those connections you make in college are important, but when you make those connections in theater or dance and those tight-knit communities, those, that's family like that you have for life. And, and it's just, that's my favorite part of it. That's what I think is valuable. Um, you know, if you work with a director, we have grad directors who have gone on to produce plays in New York and even Korea and Edinburgh, and they take our undergraduate actors with them. If you work with them while you're there, you know, you create those bonds that, that continue outside of school. Um, and I think that's really important. That's an important aspect of being in that community. Well, can you talk about the growth and development students go through as they make their way through the theater department? the growth and development of the students. As I said, I think it's important that all students, regardless of where they are, but I can talk about U of M, um, that they have to put themselves wholeheartedly into their work, right? If you don't put yourself into the work, you're not going to grow in that way. That's just all there is to it. You can't stand on the sidelines. Um, and you also, I think, can't wait for people to um, make you do something. You have to put yourself out there, you know, raise your hand, jump in first, um, and that's how people grow. I also believe, I don't know if it's the philosophy of the department, but I believe personally that it's through failure that you grow. And I think the university setting is really a, a nice place for that to happen. Like, it's okay to, to not be perfect. It's okay to try something that somebody else might be, not let you try or might be afraid to do. That's the place to be experimental. It's the place to step out and take risk. I think all theater is about stepping out and taking risk, regardless of where you are. But sometimes out in the broader world, commercial world, those it's a little more daunting to fail. But college really is a place where you can do that. It's okay to, I think that's where you learn the most, is when you take that risk. And you, it might not have been as great as you thought, but you certainly grow through that experience. Uh, we also do postmortems after all of our shows. And that's a way the department can grow and uh, be sure that our students are continuing to grow through the different processes that we put them through, is we get their feedback of what the experience was like uh, we do try to run all of our shows in the equity rules, um, and so um, that's really important to us that they're learning that so that when they go out, they, they understand what those rules are, particularly for our stage managers who are learning that, um, how to run rehearsals and uh, shows with those rules. Um, and so I think the postmortem is really important um, for us to grow as a department and how we do things which enables the students then to grow as well. Um, and I do think that communication is important. We do listen to our students. Um, they are, once a year, they do an audition, their BFA sh showcase or their audition, uh, where they have to do that to stay in, in the program. And at that time, there's discussion with the student, um, with the faculty. So it's one student with all of the performance faculty or all the tech faculty, design faculty. And they really do get, they get feedback and they get to give feedback about what's working for them, what's not working for them. And hopefully everybody's all on the same page. There's not usually big surprises, but it's a nice thing that happens. It's not one-on-one, -on -one because it, but the student is getting that very personal mentorship. Um, and I think that's a, important for their growth as well. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of really this weird thing that happens. Like when you go to college, people go to school, then they go home. Teachers go to class, then they go home. Theater, it doesn't happen that way for the students and it doesn't happen that way for faculty because mentorship is very important. And the faculty are there all day just as well. And they're there at night for the rehearsals too. Um, doors are always open. And like I said, I think what we try to do is give that individual 
as much they need to express themselves and that's where their personal growth comes from. All of those things all combined. I also think they get personal growth from working with each other. You know, so it's just this big combination of, of things um, that allow them to grow. So. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see future productions at the U of M, such as Hamlet, The Fall right. of Sparrow, which is currently on your main stage until the 22nd. It actually, uh, Hamlet, Fall of the Sparrow opens this Friday, the 13th. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be taking a closer look at one of the city's most well-known actresses and how she's using her craft to benefit the community. Stay tuned. We see the potential in every single student. That sounds like a confession to me. I love watching these kids as they start as freshmen in high school and watching them mature and grow. At last, my right arm is complete again! The theater program at GHS, it's something special. It is very intensive, it's very interactive. When a student starts here their freshman year, they start with introduction to theater. And after that year, they have a choice to either go into acting or technical theater. And then after that, they join our production workshop class. It's the class that is completely run by students. The students do mostly everything. We build the sets, we do lighting, we make the costumes, we do the shows. It's very fun. I mean, everybody's very supportive of each other. Now we're all in this together. It's taught me so much about how to act and how to have a stage presence. Not only are we teaching the students the skills that they need to be a great performer or a great stage manager or a wonderful lighting designer, we're teaching them skills that they're going to be able to apply to whatever they do in their life. This department uh, not only makes wonderful theater, but more importantly, this department makes wonderful people. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. If you decide to take the theater path all the way to the professional world, you always have to make sure you're prepared. One way young actors can take the next step is seeing a private acting coach, where actors have already made the transition, help others develop the necessary skill sets. Here with me now to talk about the ins and outs of being a private acting coach is Irene Christ, who works with students all across Memphis. Ms. Christ, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, it's good to be here. Can you talk about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis as an acting coach? Well, it's very, um, there's a wide spectrum. I have worked with and do work with professional actors who want to take that next step and just really hone their audition pieces. Um, I've also, I've worked with people who simply need addiction help um, and people that were having difficulties presenting in a classroom, whether they're um, uh, uh, young teens or uh, professional people who weren't comfortable presenting a, a prospect. So a lot, but a lot of what I do is work with uh, teens in preparing their auditions for college, um, preparing their auditions for uh, theatrical things going on around town. Um, but Primarily, I work with people who want to take the next step, whether it's in a professional situation or I want to audition for a show and I don't know where to start. How do you prepare them for that level of commitment when they're interested in taking the next step? Um, I use a lot of monologues because that's often what they're asked to do in, in preparation. I work with a great many musical theater people who, who are great have wonderful voices and who do beautiful dance, but they haven't, they don't tend to stress acting skills. So um, that's something that I, I work with a great deal. Well, how has your experience in professional theater influenced your teaching? Oh, tremendously. I, I have retired from acting, but I do do a lot of directing around town. And um, as an actor, I have 
felt I have found that I'm able to communicate with them on that level. Um, a lot of directors or, or coaches have been that have been directors but not necessarily actors have a little bit more trouble. Uh, I feel like I've com I communicate well with actors because I can find where they are and move them forward. Well, what, what methods do you use when working with your students? I do not believe in using a particular method. I have all of those methods in my head, but uh, it depends on the student. There are students that uh, Strasburg works very well for, um, but there are Stanislavski, I will, I'll pick and choose from each method depending on my student, the situation, and how far they are from really empathizing with their character. Do you learn anything about yourself when you're teaching your students? Always. You learn about yourself in any aspect of theater. And uh, I have always felt that uh, teaching was, for me, as, caused as much growth in me as it does in my students. And if it doesn't, then I'm doing it wrong. What made you decide you wanted to become a teacher? I've kind of always wanted to do this. Even in uh, times in my life where I went off and did corporate things, I always kept a private student or two to keep me fresh, I guess, and to keep me growing. Why do you believe theater is important? Oh, it's, I, I think it shows us a part of ourselves that we would otherwise not see. I don't think that film as wonderful as it is, is not, I don't believe that film is the kind of thing that you connect with as much as you connect with someone on a live stage doing things in real time. Um, and I, I just feel that it's important for all of us to be able to empathize and connect in that way. How do you begin relationships with your students? Um, getting to know them wherever they are. A lot of them think that they've got to have a certain level of expertise in order to, uh, to work, and that's simply not true. Uh, so wherever they are uh, is, is where we start. Well, this is a lovely conversation. Thank you for joining me it's today. It's good to see you, Katie. Theater is a skill that takes years to develop, but only a couple of hours to enjoy. Make sure to take a look at the upcoming spring, spring season at all the local playhouses. For more information on our programming, please check us out on the web at ghstv.org, where we are streaming live 24 hours a day. You can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Caitlin Poindexter. From all of us at GHS TV, thank you for watching Crosstalk, and I hope to see you again.